I love pre-cons. I even designed a pre-con once for the professor. Today, we're taking a real chance. That's right, we're partnering up Crark the Thumbless with Kaidel. Dex a nightmare in the best kind of way. Let's go, Crark trigger on the stack. Come on, come on. There's no way. And if Wizards is listening, I'd love to design a real one someday too. Seriously, you have my Discord. Precons aren't just casual decks you jam out of the box. They're teaching tools. And what Wizards has been teaching, quietly, for over a decade, isn't just how to play Commander. It's how to build decks that actually feel good to play. I went through every single Commander Precon ever released and pulled them into one giant spreadsheet, categorized by card type, but also card function, ramp spells, removal piece, and draw engine. Thanks to a little help from the team at EDHREC and Architect. Let's have a quick history lesson. Commander Precon designs move through three distinct eras, each signaling Wizards' evolving understanding of the Commander experience. First, with what I call the beginning era, from 2011 to 2019. These early Precons established the baseline with the following averages. With 39 lands, 14.6 removal spells, 9.3 ramp spells, 9 card draw spells, 4.05 recursion spells, and 3.95 protection spells. These decks were built like control decks. They played the long game with heavy interaction, but famously didn't accelerate into their end game quickly. They represent issues of what most players assume from precons, of having too many lands, not enough ramp, and just not really getting there. But then we have the expansion era, from 2020 to 2022. This is when Commander Precons exploded from a limited release of 4 to 5 decks per year to 15 per year. With a more modernized land count of 37.6 lands, a slight reduction in removal spells of 13.4, an addition of more card draw at 11 spells on average, a substantial increase in ramp at 12.6, and a slight reduction in both recursion and protection. These decks started to look closer to the well-oiled machines we might build ourselves. They did something powerful and stuck to it. It's when players really start to notice how strong pre-cons have become. And in the last two years, our current modern era, which starts at 2023, to present day, the current design approach is a slimmer average land base, an even more reduction of removal at 12 spells, maintaining strong card draw at 10.7 draw spells on average, even more increase in ramp to 12.8, and even more reduction in recursion to three recursion spells, and more reduction in protection to 3.13. And also interestingly, a new pattern of token generation across all archetypes, even outside of what are notably token decks, at 5.8 token generation spells on average. These modern era precons are built for action. They ramp quickly, generate board presence through tokens, and focus less on grinding through recursion or protection. So now that we've seen how precons have changed on average across time, let's take a look at the overall trend. We saw that Land counts dropped. Early decks infamously ran more than 40 lands. Modern era precons have 37 on average. And ramp increased. Ramp used to mean 6 to 8 spells. Today it's 12 to 14. Card draw also increased. Draw spells climbed from 7 to 8 cards to 10 to 12, with the biggest jump around 2018 with 13.5 card draw sources per deck. And removal slimmed down from 15 to 17 spells in old decks to 10 to 12 today. Decks in 2024 have 30% less removal than their 2013 counterparts. The data doesn't just show mechanical shifts, it shows a philosophy. Less waiting, more doing. I shared this data with product designers at Wizards to better understand how they design for Commander and what drove these subtle changes. And their responses support this trend towards shifting numbers and precons to deliver on big moments. On increasing ramp. Ramp is fun. Mana generation is important for Commander and important for supporting the splashy, expensive cards we want precon enjoyers to be excited for. We also want players to realistically be able to recast their commanders more than once in a game. And on card draw becoming more prevalent, drawing cards is fun. It increases consistency of the deck, and you get to see more of the precon. More options for plays and more ways to rebuild after interaction or board wipes. 
It goes back to making sure games end and don't stall out. And another designer shared, higher floors of ramp and draw average out the game experience and makes games a little more consistent. With lowering removal, over-indexing on removal leaves less room for fun and proactive cards. It also means commanders stick around less often and don't get to shine. We embrace a bit more of the battlecruisery style in precons, where removal should be used on the most threatening pieces, but the games should still be proceeding forward. We like games ending in precons, and too much removal stagnates them. Removal is a class of card that is typically least flavorful or central to a theme. So it often is minimized for stuff that builds up a board or stuff that's more on theme. I usually aim for three generalist removal spells, two removal spells that hit multiple artifacts or enchantments, and one one-shot graveyard interaction. I also have three sweepers with one sweeper resetting everything and two sweepers that leave something behind. With protection and recursion, protection is a dealer's choice sort of thing. I personally think it's more fun to answer a big threat cleanly and then have the controller feel smart for reanimating on the next turn or whatever. Protection spells play a lot like counter spells, which just says no to your opponents and aren't the most fun. But reanimation spells, regrowths, and finding ways to grind through the removal is fun and creates for more memorable stories. Personally, I make a category for resilience, which includes both of these types of cards. If I were making an average deck with all factors equal, I'd want some of both. Protection keeps you ahead. Recursion gets you back after being brought down. Both are important. So jumping back to numbers, across more than a decade of decks, the composition of a precon is surprisingly consistent, despite the trends we saw earlier. On average, a precon has 10.6 card draw spells, 12.1 ramp spells, and 13 removal spells on average. Knowing how recent precon products are so well designed and playable right out of the box, I wanted to turn this into an easier to remember structure. Let's call it the 10 10 10 38 blueprint. 10 draw, 10 ramp, and 10 removal with 38 lands. Easy to remember, statistically sound, as proven by this video over here, and a great starting point for building decks that play well. While we have the structure, here's another tip from Wizards on how to fill out these categories of cards. When you're picking your 10 to 12 card draw spells, it's good to have some that are great early, cantrips or stuff like faithless looting, some that are engines, some that are great to get a burst of cards when you have no board, like painful truths, and some that are good at refilling later in the game, X cost draw spells. Same can go for ramp and making sure you have two mana ramp, a couple of three mana ramp, and one or two bigger ramp cards, though ramp is a lot more dependent on your strategy. I find that variation of role per category makes games more varied and interesting. Just putting in the top efficient stuff might be strong, but I'm more looking at a pre-con level beginner experience for maximizing varied games over best strength. And if you ever feel stuck between optimizing and playing what you love, optimize for enjoyment, tell a cool story with your deck, and share something about yourself. If this helped you rethink deck building, please drop a comment and also please subscribe to my Patreon to keep supporting creating deck building videos and commander videos like this. Thanks for watching. See you next game. Yo, what's up everyone? It's your boy. And this time I get the video. This video is saying that precons are like dramas and not decks that you pay 50 bucks for to get like $60 worth of cards. Sometimes a precon will be like a hundred bucks for some reason. And another one in that set will be like 20 bucks. But like those are the ones that I buy because I don't have money, but they're like still super good because all you need to do is just like get a couple cards to upgrade them, which I like doing. So I like putting cards like Underworld Breach. I like putting cards like Dasis Oracle and then like a little black spell called Demonic Consultation. And suddenly that precon is like just as good as any other deck. So like hot tip. Upgrade your precons with those cards. Nobody will notice. Oh yeah, I gotta show the videos. If you like all the number stuff in this in this video, you should definitely check out this 
this one over here because this one's got hella numbers. But if numbers isn't your thing, like me, I don't really like numbers, then like this video over here is talking about how to build commander with just vibes, which is like kind of my style, right? Like that's pizza style. So like numbers behind card draw, pizza commander. Those are the two videos. Pick one, click on one of them. I don't know. It's good to see y'all again, though. See y'all next week. And don't forget to watch the LGS.